Okay, so in the second part of the video on quicksort, we'll examine the code. If you look at the code, um, I'll write quicksort as QS briefly so that I have enough screen space. So if you look at the code, there are two procedures. And first procedure is QS, which takes three parameters, A, P, and R. Now, if you have gone through the example um, in the previous video, you will uh, you will remember that we need the array that we are going to sort. We need the starting position of the array. This is the array that we are sorting, the starting position of the array. And also, you need an important element of the array for a call to quick sort, which is the pivot element. So this last parameter is the pivot element. So what do we do? We go on dividing the array uh, recursively based on the starting position and the pivot element. And if you remember, what we do basically is to divide the array into two parts. One part is all the elements that are smaller than the pivot. And the second part is all the elements that are uh, larger than the pivot. So the code goes like this. If P less than R, that means the starting part of the array, starting from where we are uh, going to sort for a recursive call, if it is less than the last element of the array, which is the element R, actually I told you a little bit confusing. Basically R is the last element and also in this particular case, we will choose R as the pivot element. So both the pivot and the last element, both are same. So if P less than R, what it means is that there are more than one elements in the array that we are going to sort. And in that case, we have to partition the array. So what we do is then Q is the partitioning point. We call the procedure partition. A, P, and R. And of course, we'll look at the procedure partition uh, in a little while. Now, once you have got the partitioning point, that is where we should split the array, then the remaining task is nothing but two calls to two recursive calls to the quick sort algorithm uh, or quick sort procedure, the same procedure. One is from starting from, of course, the first um, parameter should be the array. One is the <coughs> starting part, the left side. and Q minus one. And the second is Q S A Q plus one and R. Why the element Q is uh, left out? Because if you recall what we discussed before, that every partitioning step, we fix the position of one of the elements, the pivot element, correctly in the sorted array. So there is no need to pass that element anymore. So in the first part, we pass the array starting from P to Q minus one, and in the second part, we pass Q plus one to R. So those are the two recursive calls. So what remains to be seen is, of course, what is the uh, partition procedure. So let's have a look at the partition procedure now. So this is procedure partition. And of course it takes three parameters again, the array, the starting and the end. And what is not mentioned in the code in the lecture is that the last parameter, R, um, the end 
position of the array that we are passing is chosen as the pivot. So what we do, we first copy the pivot element into a variable called x and you can see the r rth location is copied there and also we use another variable i which is assigned the value p minus 1. Now it's a bit artificial here but you will see that what we do basically is uh, we if the element that we are examining first if it is less than the element uh, that we have chosen as pivot we don't do anything we keep that element to the left side of the array so there is a little bit complication regarding the choice of the variable i but you should be able to work out on your own if you examine the code uh, carefully so once this is done what we have to do is now we have to write a loop that will divide the array or separate the array into two parts. So that's what is done here for j first um, when the loop starts iterating the first time it iterates with a value j equal to p and how long does it iterate to r minus 1 because uh, remember r we have chosen as pivot element or the element at the rth position of the array we have chosen as the pivot element so we have to iterate until the position that is just before that rth position so this is the for loop now in the for loop what we do is we do if aj the current element aj is the current element that we are examining if it is less than equal to x uh, x is the pivot we don't need to do anything simply we increment i to i plus 1 what it means is that the current element if it is less than the pivot it's already in the correct part of the array that is already it is in the left part of the array <clears throat> else if the current one is not less than or equal to x it is greater than x in other words, it is greater than the pivot element. So it should be pushed to the right side of the array. And that is why there is an exchange of AI with AJ. So I has now gone to the correct place when we have incremented due to all these elements that are smaller than or equal to the pivot element and we have come to a place where aj is an element that is larger than the pivot element so we know that current ith position the element is correct in the sense that it is less than the pivot element so we exchange the two current element the current element with that element that is in the ith position so that's the loop that is basically the loop where the separation of the array into the left part and the right part is happening and when we are done with it we have to place the pivot element in the correct position so remember the pivot element was initially the last element of the array. So now we bring it to the correct position, which is nothing but the i plus 1th position. So exchange a i plus 1 with a r. And of course, um, if you recall what we actually when we called partition then we got back this value which is nothing but the um, place where we should split the array so that value is now i plus one and that is why we return 
i plus 1. Now, if you need another simulation of exactly what is happening here, in the previous video, the simulation I have given you is the conceptual simulation that how the array is divided into the left and right part. Um, the, there is another simulation exactly following these steps in the book by Corman, Lisserson, and uh, Rivest, and Stein. So, uh, in it's the simulation is given in page 147 of the edition that I have. But if you look up the book, if there is um, another edition in the library, then perhaps the page number will be different, but more or less uh, it will be within the quick sort pages.